Good evening and welcome to the Sunday night online edition of Terp Talk. I am Wayne Viner. Now both Mason and Bruce away from the microphone, stepping in ably, stepping in to talk Terps is Amid Gafir. You can find him on Twitter at a great name, Gafir the Turtle. Uh, Amid, how do you spell that for people who want to follow you on Twitter? Yeah, it's uh, Gafir, G-H-A-F as in Frank, I-R. And then the turtle. Um, yeah, it kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? It does. It's it's <laughs> perfect. Uh, last time we talked about doing something on air, you were with Sports Illustrated. Now you started out a wonderfully named site called The Black and Gold. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, left, left Sports Illustrated. Um, just some, some management changes. Got an opportunity to kind of go out. Um, just really kind of wanted to take an opportunity to take, take a chance on myself. Uh, build out something the way, uh, you know, provide some really good coverage, in, you know, in depth behind the scenes and then as well as, you know, uh, all, always having a, a live coverage on campus, things like that. Um, so it's been a little bit over a year now. Uh, just finished up my MBA up at Maryland in uh, August, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm just just rolling with it and uh, definitely look forward to continuing to build it. It's pretty fun. Cool. Well, I like the writing and you do most of the writing, correct? I, I do. Yeah. I brought, brought, some, brought some people on. Um, you know, we have a couple other people like Logan Delizio, uh, John Diggs, um, do a podcast with the uh, Shelton Tell guys. So, uh, but uh, definitely, uh, definitely growing. Excellent. Well, uh, one of the things that might be growing tonight is a sense that Maryland basketball might end up being okay anyhow. Terps wins beat number 20, Florida. What's what's your immediate feedback in a game that ended a short while ago? Yeah, I mean, definitely I, just a much needed win when you kind of look at uh, just where they're at in the season with what's happened. Um, uh, you know, the turnovers in the beginning, the first couple minutes, first 10 minutes or so was a little bit concerning, but it seemed like they settled in and, um, you know, it looks like for the first time they, they were able to find their shots a little bit from the field. They do. Uh, they had to do it. They have to play Ayala 38 minutes. Fats goes 37. So we're back to the high minutes. But it works. And when you have a point guard that scores 19 points, uh, only has a few assists and five turnovers, you're living right. And that's where Maryland comes out. Fats has 19. He has the two assists, the five turnovers. Ayala shot much better, goes six for 11, three of five beyond the arc. He brings in five boards. They they look almost like what we thought they would look when we set out on this season. They look fast at times. They were able to get open shots, and some of the shots even went in the basket. And, you know, they look a lot better when the ball goes in the basket. Yeah, they do. And I think it's kind of surprising because uh, Kudis Waheb only finished with one point in 24 minutes. So you kind of really expect it kind of going into the season, you know, Maryland to kind of have a more balanced inside out game. But, you know, really, uh, I think it was eight of their uh, 18 points in the paint came in the last five minutes to close it out. But after that, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of these players, like you said, Ayala uh, and, and Fads were able to find their uh, find their touch from uh, from the field. So uh, I thought that was that definitely stood out. You know, Q would be really good if he could catch the ball. I think that's yeah. the one part. The position seems okay. He really fights for it. The passes seem to surprise him. Uh, but maybe he'll catch on as time goes by. Julian Reese, uh, no, he's not Joe Smith, but, man, that guy looks like he has some upside. Yeah, he just looks like he has just some some really good natural athleticism and uh, it has really good length and plays with some really good inst- in- instincts. Um, I-, I think he does a really good job, and I think I know I know Danny Manning always gets asked about when he can play the four, uh, but he does a really good job kind of backing up Q, pl- going against some uh, more athletic guards when Q kind of struggles there. So I I think so far it's been uh um, it's been a, a good good sign to see Reese behind him. It has, and then tonight. Finally, the Twin Towers makes their debut. I think they only had four minutes on the court together. But to me, that's growth. And it sort of allows you to shorten the bench, but give the opposition different looks. So Florida has what looks like a defensive lineman who plays center. And you know, we had uh, we had somebody to go against that. And no, we didn't really exploit it. And Juju's young. And I think both of them get lost a little bit on defense. But it worked. And at the end, you say, did you win the game or not? And for once, you can say Maryland wins the game. The turnovers 
I think we both agree we're a little out of hand. And then at the end, they end up with 15 turnovers. Yeah. It's, so uh, it's, it's, they tightened up. It, it, they got better as the pressure went up. I like that. Yeah, that's definitely true. It's definitely true. It's not, um, you know, you definitely, uh, you know, when you have 15 turn turnovers, especially when you're going up against conference play, but just against any uh, marquee opponent, um, that margin for error. Uh, obviously, this game was back and forth all night, I believe 11 lead changes. Uh, Maryland had a lead at seven at one point, and then Florida was able to, within seconds, cut it back down to one. Um, yeah. So, so for, for, for Maryland to be able to kind of bounce back from that, um, I, I thought that was uh, – um, you know, all all contributed to a, a big emotional win for this team. And it was pretty cool. The last time Maryland beat a top 20 opponent, if you can believe it or not, was seven years ago. I remember the game Maryland played. Um, I can't remember where it was. It was a tournament game similar to this one where they play Iowa State. Might have been in Kansas City. And Maryland won that game. It's just the scheduling. I hope that the new regime schedules a few more top 20 games early in the season i used to love those yeah when lefty was here when gary was here you, you had some really cool intersectional games maryland's gotten away from that a bit and uh, i hope whoever comes in next will uh, br will bring that back so uh the ravens had a, had a good game a interesting game i mean they lost the Redskins had a bizarre game that to me felt like they almost won that game. That was as up and down and back and forth a game. For a while, it looked like the Cowboys were playing Maryland. The Cowboys rolled out to a 24 to, was it 24 to nothing? 24 nothing at half, yeah. 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 I, mean, yeah I, take it, I take it that that game uh, drew your attention today. Yeah, it definitely did. Um, you know, obviously did my pregame uh, trash talk with my Cowboys fans. But um, yeah, I mean, just the first half just looked uh, just completely bleak. Uh, there just really was no flow offensively. Uh, Heineke just looked torrid at one point. I believe at one point he was, uh, what, two of uh, 13 for 19 yards. Uh, there was just not you, you couldn't get anything going. Uh, and then when uh, Antonio Gibson, uh, when he uh, ended up fumbling the football, um, it just it just kind of felt like you know, every time the Washington was able to kind of take one step forward, they were going two back and the Cowboys had the ball. Um, so uh, able to obviously turn it around in the second half, uh, outscoring Dallas 12-0 uh, in the in the fourth quarter. Had a chance at the end, but uh, just disappointing. It was disappointing. Uh, we're, we are both Washington football team fans, as is Mason. Of course, Bruce is a Raven diehard. And I think uh, we were all dying hard today on this one. No, nobody around here is happy. The, the team formerly known as the Redskins roared back in a game that seemed to be over. And there was one play right before sort of the lights went out on Washington where DeAndre Carter had a chance to, to haul in about a 40-yard pass that glanced off his fingertips. And Washington sort of self-destructs after that. But they're still in the playoff hunt. They still, even though San Francisco wins in overtime and a bizarre ending there, Washington's still in the playoff hunt. Do you see anything long-term positive out of what Ron Rivera is trying to build in Washington? Um, I, I, I definitely have more, I think, of an optimistic outlook on Washington now than I did five years ago. Um, I mean, I grew up watching uh, – you know, Patrick Ramsey, the most, you know, when I, before college, Jason Campbell was the most successful uh, Washington quarterback that I had watched, uh, if I want to include Brad Johnson. So I feel like just now, compared to, to a couple of years ago, I feel like um, I do see a little bit better. Um, and I obviously, having uh, not having Montez Sweat today, Chase Young out for the season, you know, I do know that those are uh, two young pieces. Um, I just think uh, until, until Washington gets a quarterback, it's hard for me to – to, to look at this team from a long-term perspective and and kind of see where this team is going. Um, so I think that's kind of the biggest holdup for me. But I'm personally of the opinion, I think I'm, I'm, I'm okay with Ron Rivera right now. Um, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't foresee a change right now. Oh, no, not at all. And much like watching uh, the Maryland Terrapins, you look at a game where you're down 24-0 and you don't get blown out and you have a shot in the last minutes to win it and go, hey, the one good thing is they didn't quit. And if you're going to quit on a game, this would have been one that you could have quit on. And I'm not yeah. sure you would have caught too much flack. No, Tyler, 
Taylor Heineke does not have an NFL arm, but my goodness, that guy's fun to watch. Yeah, he is. A couple of his throws, though, he just kind of lobbed it up there. Uh, the, the cow, I think it was back. I can't remember the sequence, but it was uh, back-to-back throws on second and third yeah. round. And, uh, yeah, it's, so sometimes when he makes those mistakes, it definitely my, – my, I stop, stop breathing for it a little sec. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he is definitely fun to watch. The diving touchdowns, It's uh, there's a reason why we, we've embraced him so much. Absolutely. Football's a hot topic around here. Terps go in the pinstripe bowl. Maryland has a presser on Tuesday. I'm sure most of the media will will pop in for that. Uh, it was fun talking to both Mike and Damon in New York City on last week's presser that was hosted at Yankee Stadium. But one of the big topics is who's Maryland going to bring in in the early period? Nobody knows more about Maryland football recruiting, I think, than you do. What do you see that's going on good for the Maryland Terrapins over the next few days with early signing period being, is it the 15th? Yeah, 15th, starting on Wednesday, uh, 15th to the 17th. So, uh, so yeah, um, yeah, right now, kind of the main main guys from the high school ranks to know, uh, Octavian Smith, he's a four-star wide receiver, um, has a new top five at Boston College, Northwestern, uh, Duke, Penn State. Uh, but, you know, Maryland's in a good spot, just came off an official to Maryland. Leon Houghton, he's another six foot three wide receiver down in uh, Benedictine in uh, Virginia. Um, he's again, he's coming off as Maryland official. He's taken uh, visits to Vanderbilt, Virginia. So that's another guy. Um, there's a couple tackles. Uh, Andre Roy is obviously another name to know. Uh, he's a local kid out of St. Francis. Matthew McCoy, he's another Florida uh, tackle down down. Uh, uh, obviously from Florida, Sunshine State. Um, he's a really talented prospect. I actually used to play tight end and just moved over to tackle this year, so super intriguing. And then after that, you know, you kind of look a lot more at the transfer portal. Um, you know, Maryland hosted uh, Florida wide receiver Jacob Copeland, who just hit the transfer portal um, just days ago. I believe Thursday night, Friday morning it was released. Um, Sam for tight end, Michael Weiss. He's another guy that visited campus. Um, so there's a lot of guys. There's a couple corners, a couple linebackers. The one linebacker that just committed this weekend, Vandarius Cowan. Um, he took an official visit, uh, not the last Thursday, the Thursday prior. Um, he had known Locks because he was a former top 100 recruit who signed with Alabama when Loxie was at Alabama. So he was pretty transparent with me that he pretty much just wanted to get to Maryland, make sure everything was good. And if you got the green light, Maryland is going to be the next spot. And then even take 24 hours. So he'll have two years left to play. Sounds like a decent recruiting hall, and I guess in the area that Maryland has need, which is linebacker and big receiver. Maryland has a lot of little guy receivers, but sort of lacking now as we turn the page to 2022 season. They just don't have the size there. I'm looking forward to having some big 10 sized receivers. From what you know, and I'll ask Locks when I see him next, is Corey Deitches going to project as a tight end? Or are they going to use him as a receiver? Was pretty effective as the slot receiver against Rutgers. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think kind of exactly that. I think he's a guy that you kind of you you can put at the tight end spot, but you know that he can be flexible, shift out wide. Um, you know, maybe next year a guy like you know I think of Weston Wolf. He's a freshman tight end. Maryland fans might not know the name now, but he enrolled early with C.J. Dupree last year, so he gets another year where he's in the system has been here six months uh, in it, or six months earlier than an average freshman. So he's another uh, threat in the receiving game. So Loxie likes to run a lot of two tight end sets, usually one blocking, one receiving. But if you get a guy like Deitches and Wolf, and then you're able to uh, uh, split Deitches out wide, then you create another potential mismatch with uh, with Wolf against whichever linebacker he's going against. So um, I think you can work Digest a lot of ways. I think in high school it was really fun to watch him just because um, you know the PG fade. Whenever you, you just have him inside the inside the red zone, you could just pretty much throw it up to Corey and he was coming down with a touchdown. Um, so I think I think Akonko is going to be a big big loss for them. But I think Jake or excuse me Digest is more than capable of kind of filling in into that uh, uh, electric role. All right. As we had to break here, uh, how many games do you watch? Because I know you watch a lot of the high school ball. How many in a regular football season on a weekly basis? How much football are you looking at? Um, because, I mean, that's even during the week because sometimes I'm yeah. even watching uh, game. Man, I don't know. Definitely, I would say I would say more than 100 hours for sure. 100, 150 maybe. 
uh, I don't think right now that sounds too unrealistic. I mean, it's a lot of football. It's a lot of football. And you know your stuff. I mean, thanks <laughs> for being on Terp Talk this Sunday night. And I'm going to have your contact info up here on the screen. And we'll step aside and hear is a word from Rick Jacklich and Maryland receiver Rakim Jarrett. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jacklich Law Group. Find out why clients, judges, and other lawyers call us the big dogs from the small firm and why we've been named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country as well as why the Daily Record, Maryland's legal newspaper, has named the Jacklitz Law Group the very best, best personal injury trial firm and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. Hiring the Jacklitz Law Group was the best decision anyone in our family has ever made. Who's your lawyer? The Jacklitz Law Group. Who are the big dogs? The Jacklitz Law Group. Woof! At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support, Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Call Superior Tours for your trip to the Pinstripe Bowl to see the Terps on December 29th. Welcome back to this Sunday night edition of Terp Talk Live Online. I'm Wayne Viner, and joining me is Maryland guard Jeff Baxter. He still has his finger on the pulse of most of what's going on in College Park. Jeff, welcome in today. Thank you so very much, Wayne. Good to be here. Hey, well, uh, you know, we used to do a lot of post-game shows together. You did some of the work with uh, in place of Johnny Holiday when Turge was the coach doing those uh, Tuesday or Thursday night shows. And now here we are back together post-COVID. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's good to hear your voice, especially on a night when Maryland pulls off a 70-68 win that the program needed, the uh, much-needed win for the Maryland program. What's your feeling about today's Maryland-Florida game? I was so excited uh, to watch that game, and, and obviously the win was great. But I was also, in watching it, they, they moved with a different swagger today. And, and, and it, was, it was confident, um, and it was just different. And, and that's a good thing. That's what we want to see with our Terrapins. We do. They actually got guard play. Almost as promised, Ayala has 19. He's, uh, for the past couple of weeks, seems to be somebody who was put on the back of milk cartons in College Park. If you've seen this player, please call this number. <laughs> and and then, boom, he's back. And Fats, you know, he can get to the basket. He has a little trouble scoring there, but he starts hitting his threes. He becomes very effective. You've played a lot of guard at a very high level. What's the difference when the ball starts going in the basket? It, it's 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 mental. It really is. Once you see it go in the basket, um, it ignites both obviously your offense, but it also ignites your defense. Um, and, and I think that's the biggest key. Uh, they were playing with with uh, it was they were playing like they were supposed to win, and that's what I wanted to see. They were not they were non confident. Basically, I'm sorry, they were confident, shall I say? And I and I thought that was the biggest key of the game, and. and and sometimes I thought they passed up a couple of shots, uh, but at the same time, it was nice that that Fats put kept putting pressure on him by getting to that bucket. Um, he made some 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 tricky passes, and they didn't get to where they needed to get to. But again, putting the pressure on them, it, it made a difference, and it opened it up for everyone. Until I looked at the stats, I didn't realize Maryland gets 28 paint points. Florida only gets 18. Florida had some size. Maryland was able to to combat that, and Hakeem Hart, uh, now it's 6'8", and has some actual weight to him, pretty effective inside. 
Yeah, yeah. And I'm noticing um, I, I, early in the season, for some reason, the king was was hesitant on his shot. Um, it almost seems, seems as though it was a lack of confidence. And I'm not sure where that came from. And it was so weird, weird to me. But but he he looked good today. He did look good to me. It and I don't know what really happened. And I'm sure all of this will come out and there'll be a hundred stories of what really happened, and we'll still never know. Right. But to me, it looked like they told Akeem, it's not enough ball for you to shoot, so you're going to be the odd guy out. You only shoot if absolutely necessary. You're the fifth guy. <laughs> and and then he played like that until the game that Maryland loses where Hakeem had the last shot. And after that, Turgeon said he looked and figured they'd cover IL and they'd cover Scott, so he'd have Hart take the last shot. And I was thinking, why in the world, if this is the guy that's taking the last shot, why doesn't he shoot during the games? Who in the world brings a guy out to take the last shot when he's your fifth option? But, you know, those days are over, I guess. Um, Everybody does seem a little more relaxed in the actual playing of the basketball game. And and it's helped. And Maryland shortens the bench. When you play Juju and Q together, it's it. It shortens the bench, and it's a, a Twin Towers look that I hope works out. Your Twin Towers were more of a bias than Derek Lewis. It wasn't really a Twin Towers like that. Do you think that having two guys who probably should be playing center is going to work for a team like Maryland? I, well, I think I, I think they had to mix it up. So I, 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 was, I was a proponent, um, even while, after seeing the first couple of games while Turgeon was there, I was a proponent of, Mixing the lineup up, mixing up your 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 lineup. Um, you know, possibly playing the bigs together. I was even a proponent of of hey, maybe you bring um, a fats off the bench and you have Ayala go back to the point and Hart go to the two guard again. Just mixing it up to invigorate the offense. So I'm happy and excited that that Danny's trying different lineups. I mean, you just never know. Do you have a front runner? or who you'd like to see or who you think, and they might be two different people, who you'd like to see as the next coach and who you think is probably going to get the the ask from Maryland. So that, that's this is the, the toughest call, in my opinion, um, this year. It's going to be the toughest call. Uh, Maryland's a big, big-time job. We need um, someone who, who's positive. We need someone who has a connection to this area. Uh, he he must, and I say this with 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 so much um, sincerity. He must have the ability to pull the guys in this area and to keep example. Two guys that are now playing at Duke from going down to Duke University, and they could be playing here. I mean, I'm just saying it could be an option. Um, and, and and we need to keep these guys here. So we need someone who has that ability. There there they are a bunch of people. Out there, obviously, um, uh, uh, I have thoughts, and and I just think we need someone who's who's from this, who has the connection to this area. I agree, and then this is where um, we're, we're all big people here, so we can handle a rant or two. And I'm not sure this qualifies as a Mason level of rant. <laughs> and and then I'll disqualify that by saying, but here I go anyhow. Mark Turgeon never like this fan base and to me it's like taking a job when you get there and go i don't like working here i don't like the people i don't like the attitude this sort of and the university of maryland basketball maybe lacrosse from here geographically towards philly and towards long island and the city and boston that is a tough attitude it's it's not the same with maryland football it's really not the same with the redskins it might be a little bit with the ravens but I would say that the closest thing that we have to sort of hockey tough, Jersey tough, is the Maryland basketball fan base is a different fan base. It is a Northeast, in your face, using every word in the book, high intensity fan base. And when you say from here, what I hear is you have to be able to take that, sort of like a Gary Williams did or Lefty did, and you embrace that and you use that, and that's part of your personality. If you don't connect with that, if that's not you, this is the wrong place for you. You'll never make the people happy. And to come back and say the fans were too tough, to have your surrogates, Mark's surrogates, come out and say, oh, the fans were too tough. 
get yeah. paid two and a half million dollars. Somebody boos you and you quit. No wonder this team folds. No wonder they're not <laughs> tough. No wonder you wouldn't. I'm not sure you'd take a guy like a Gravis Vasquez because he's too outspoken and in your face for a Mark Durgeon. I can't believe you'd actually go out and blame the people who are paying you two and a half million dollars who yeah. pay their taxes in this state, pay to the Terrapin Club, buy tickets, and they boot because they're not happy and that made you quit? Holy, I, I, <laughs> I just, oh my God. I had so, no, it's, it's so interesting you say that because you have to be prepared for this fan base. And, you know, I've always been a proponent uh, in my life, my, my, my work, professional life, my personal life. You don't, especially professionally, you don't take a job that you can't handle. If you cannot handle it, do not take the job because there's more than just the roses that come with it. It's more than that. It's, it's, it's being able to interact with the folks, being able to deal with um, criticism, being able to uh, literally deal with a fan that's all in your face, and you have to understand, look, that's a fan. They want a package. They want everything that we're supposed to have here. This, this is Turpin basketball. And, and if you ever, obviously you've been there, um, to Duke, even when you go to Kentucky, Kentucky Blue, it's the same thing. Their fan base is the same way. Syracuse, the same way. They believe that you must, I mean, you must put a product on the court that makes sense and you must be productive in doing so that represents their version and their vision of what the truth is so yes. you could have gotten away with this if you if in the same way that gary did they didn't always win and people were mad sometimes at who gary recruited and so on but they loved gary williams then people were mad at ralph because the team was bad but they loved ralph Friedgen. So that's about as far as I'm going to go on the record. And this really isn't about Mark Turgeon. I'm just, I don't want the national media who somehow believe that getting booed is reason to, I believe the term would be quit. Now, maybe he was asked to leave. I think there was some asking to leave, but basically who quit a multi-million dollar job coaching basketball uh, yeah. because the fans weren't nice. And look, these are not nice fans, and they're not going to be nice fans. So whoever comes in next, who I think is probably going to be Kevin Willard if they can get the deal done, is an Under Armour guy. Seton Hall's had two big upset wins this week. I, it wouldn't wouldn't bother me if that was the guy. And I officially, I don't want any piece of a Bruce Pearl, really, or Rick Patino. I do want to win. I want somebody who wants to win basketball games, but. Yes. Not looking to bring in people coming off an NCAA violation. So that really narrows, still narrows the field. Um, we, you and I had talked about Johnny Dawkins before, talked on the air about Andy Enfield, Kevin Correct. Willard, and yes. I really can't see a list that's much longer than that. I, I really, I'm, I'm concurrent with you. I really don't see a list that, that any longer than that. Um, there could be someone that comes out of the, out of the wings, but I got a feeling. And when I say that, um, it depends on the way the school is trying to go. Are you just trying to say, OK, forget that. We, we're going to go straight to example um, to uh, Mike Jones that was at the math who, ha who has no college experience, but does obviously has experience with a big time program. I'm not sure if they're going to do that. That could be that. Remember, Boston went and went and got um, can't think of his name. The Celtics went and got uh, what's his name, who, who was there coaching for the last, what, seven, eight years. And he never really? crossed the pinnacle, but he got the guy that was at Butler. Yes, yes. Yeah. Remember okay. That? I can't remember that, his name anymore either, but he's I out there. Crazy. And they came, and he came out of nowhere. He came out of nowhere in Boston's pick. But again, I don't know if Maryland's going to do that. But I, I'll tell you this: Kevin Wheeler, he he can handle. It. He can definitely handle uh, the base, and he can embrace the base. I, 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 you need someone who does not have. Who's not who's not uh, who's not soft we'll say that they're, that they're not worried about their feelings because this is not a this is not an area for that never has been nope. never will nope this is where people come from all over the world to win and there's a just a built-in pressure being here it's not just college basketball there's a lot right. of things that are that competitive around here right so anyhow uh well we'll see who damon comes up with and uh, we're not going to 
we don't have no magic uh, potion here to figure out who it's going to be, just our general feeling. Uh, so I, in wrapping up here, I hope we'll see you back at Xfinity Center soon. Do you know Danny Manning outside of Maryland? I do know, I do know Danny Manning. Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. yes. Did you ever get to play with him when he could still play? I, I did. I did. I actually played against Danny Manning um, um, when I was at when I, mean, I was a sophomore. As a matter of fact, I sat. That was the year that I sat a little longer than than I normally would have because we brought in a great, great point guard, um, Keith Gatlin, and he created more of a, a wide open um, offense, get up and down the court. But yep, I actually played against him. Man, uh, I try to tell people who are a little bit younger that he probably could have been one of the the top basketball players ever, but then the knee problems came in and well, never really yep. recovered from that. He never, he never did, but it was a great player. And, and, in, and, uh, and also with um, just going back to the, the um, choosing of a coach, Maryland also, in my opinion, they need to add um, someone of that Terp fan base. Uh, I'm sorry, Terp fan base, Terp basketball, um, uh, all of a sudden gone blank. Anyways, ter- fraternity yeah. to the um, to the uh, coaching staff. I mean, th- there's a bunch of them out there. Some well, can be part of the coaching staff. Look, uh, I mean, you could think of Simpkins, who's wanted to be on this staff for a long time. Yep. I would love to see them if Steve Blake wanted to do it to yep. to get Steve Blake out here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You talk about someone who doesn't need the headache, who's already no. set. But he he's exactly if he had a little more experience coaching anywhere he'd be my number one guy he would be he has a demeanor he has a demeanor to handle all of that um and, and there's others there's, there's folks that are uh, currently uh gatlin's currently at high point university he's one you know that could be able to come in and, and, and give them something at least look at him um again a uh, part of that that base um and then you have a couple of other young younger guys i'm sorry yeah much younger guys that that have been through there that that could be a part of that if they want to be so so i think they need to they need to embrace that more. They really do. Absolutely. They're out there. They want to be turfs. Yep. It, something about Maryland that it just works better with people from here. It really and on does. On that note, I will let you go. I know you got a lot to do this Sunday night, and we should do this again. The, let me know next time you're coming out to Xfinity Center. We can do this live on the post game show. Absolutely. I'm excited and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much as usual. All right. That is Jeff Baxter. I'm Wayne Viner, and that will do it for this evening's Terp Talk Live, the Sunday night edition. We will see you after the football press conference at College Park on Tuesday.